Hello there. I'm Bilchen Akupar. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 5 of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Ass. Ugh. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Washington Irving. Chapter 5. That all this might not be too onerous in the purses of his rustic patrons. Who are apt to consider the cost of schooling a grievous burden. And schoolmasters as mood drones. He had various ways of rendering himself both useful and agreeable. He assisted the farmers occasionally in the lighter labours of their farms. Held to make hay. Mended the fences. Took the horses to water. Drove the cows from pasture. And cut wood for the winter fire. He laid aside. Two. All the dominant dignity and absurd sway with which he lauded it in his little empire, the school, and became wonderfully gentle and ingratiating. He found favour in the eyes of the mothers by pitting the children, particularly the youngest. Unlike the lion bold, which while in so magnanimously the land did hold, he would sit with the child on one knee and rock a cradle with his foot for whole hours together. In addition to their vocations, he was the singing master of the neighbourhood and picked up many bright shillings by instructing the young folks in psalmody. It was a matter of no little vanity to him on Sundays to take his station in front of the church gallery with a band of chosen singers. Well, in his own mind, he completely carried away the palm from the parson. Certain it is. His voice resounded far above all the rest of the congregation. And there are peculiar quavers still to be heard in that church. And which may even be heard half a mile off. Quite to the opposite side of the movement. On a still Sunday morning which are said to be legitimately descended from the nose of a chibot crane. That, by divers little maker shifts, in that ingenious way which is commonly denominated by hick and by crook the worthy, had a god got until her blee enough, and was thought, by all who understood nothing of the labour of headwork, to have a wonderfully easy life of it, the schoolmaster is generally a man of some importance in the female circle of a rural neighbourhood, being considered a kind of idol, gentleman-like personage, of vastly superior taste and accomplishments to the country swains, and uh, indeed inferior in learning only to the parson, his appearance, the voir is that to occasion some little stir at the tea table of a farmhouse. An addition of a supernumerary dish of cakes or sweetmeats. Or, pride venture. The parade of a silver teapot. Our man of letters. The voir. Was peculiarly happy in the smiles of all the country damsels. How he would figure among them in the church charged. Between services on Sundays, gathering grapes for them from the wild vines that over and the surrounding trees, reciting for their amusement order patas on the tombstones, or sauntering with the whole bevy of them on the banks of the adjacent opened, while the more bashful country bumpkins hunt sheepishly back, envying his superior elegance and address to be continued.